Suwabue will always hold a special place in my empty heart, not because I have fond memories working there, but because some of you really liked it when I talked about working there. And I made buckets with those videos compared to what I was making at Suwabue, which was nice. Apparently I was hashtag relatable enough to connect with millions of people, and it took my channel to where it is today. And then less than two weeks later I made a part two to that video, and I struck an even bigger chord with people. Who likes the sequel better than the original? People think that I use the word suabwe in my videos so I wouldn't get sued. This is not true. I wasn't successful enough to get sued. They had other problems to deal with at the time. I called it suabwe for a joke. In my first video I said, I used, I used to work, to work at a very, very small local, local sandwich, sandwich shop. shop. I, don't I don't know if any of you guys heard, heard of it. It's, it's called Suabway. I was making you think that I worked at an unknown place, and then I subverted your expectations by saying I worked at Sub Suabway. But now at this point in my career, I am calling my previous place of employment Suabway because I don't want to get subed. The most requests I get for a video is Suabway Part 4, but I never really considered making another one because... I don't work there anymore. I have no new stories to talk about the place. But something happened recently, and I do want to talk about it. You see, the subway I used to work at closed down, and I am so deeply upset at this news that the only way for me to cope is to make one last video about it. So this story happened a couple of years after I quit working at Suwabway. I was behind on a video, so that meant I was in a mentally damaging mindset called crunch mode, and I had been working all day, and I started getting hungry, and I still hadn't taken floof on a walk, so I decided to kill two birds with one stone and eat floof. J just kidding, I decided to take floof on a walk to my local Suwabway. And before I entered the store, I picked up floof and held her in my arms, cause I'm not a psychopath. I know taking your dog into a restaurant is tacky and a health code violation, but this is a Suwabway we're talking about. I know how laid back it is here. There are no rules or health codes. One time when I was working at my Suwabway, this 10 year old kid came in wearing a swimsuit and literally nothing else. And he was unsupervised. He didn't want a sandwich, all he wanted was a cookie, but this kid wasn't wearing shoes or a shirt. The two things you need to get service at a restaurant. So did I tell this shirtless delinquent to get lost? No, he had money so I did business with him. I don't discriminate against shirtless people. Look, his mom was probably at the grocery store next door and he just got done with swimming lessons and he said something like, mother. I would be most grateful if you let me consume a pastry with high levels of sugar and simple carbohydrates. And his mom probably said, yeah, whatever, nerd, go get something at Suabway. So the point of this story is to let you know that I was the kind of employee who, as long as you were willing to pay for your food, didn't care what you were wearing or what health code you were violating. This is a gosh darn Suabway. So I walk in with Floof, and it's completely empty, by the way. Seems like I'm the only one in this town that even likes Suabway. And the worker, aka the only other person in the store said, is that a service animal? Floof's not a service animal. Unless the service you want is someone to chew up all your stuff and bark at everyone. But she still emotionally supports me when I tell her, I'm gonna die alone. She tries to make me feel better by licking the inside of my nose. But I didn't want to lie to this guy about Floof's emotional support status, cause if I said yes and he said prove it, I would be in trouble. So like the emotionally stable enough to not need a dog person that I am, I said, uh, no. And he said, she can't be in here. If the health inspector came in, they would fire me on the spot. Which like, geez, dude, you're gonna let the health inspector treat you like that? Stand up for yourself once in a while. So I said, okay, I'll leave. Yeah, there are other restaurants in walking distance, Suabway guy. The ramen place lets me order with floof in my arms all the time. I know this because I've already been there twice this week, and the only reason I'm even getting Suabway is because I don't want the ramen employees thinking that I'm a weird guy who brings my non-emotional support dog everywhere. You missed out, Suabway. Do you know who I am? I used to work here. And then the guy called my bluff. He said, wait, we can make it fast. As fast as Jimmy John's? This kid's standing up for himself. I'm proud of him. I knew exactly what to tell him. I want a foot-long ham sandwich on Italian bread with American cheese. I know that's the hardest cheese to pull apart with gloves on, but whatever. He sped run putting on the meat and cheese, and then he asked me, what kind of vegetables? And in my mind, I went, hold on, you didn't ask me if I wanted it toasted. I see what you're doing. You're trying to get this sandwich finished as quickly as possible, so you're not even going to ask me if I want it toasted and hope I forgot. Well, it's okay, because I didn't want it toasted, but I'm on to you. And then Floof jumped over the counter, peed on the olives, and bit the guy in the jugular. And then licked the inside of his nose. <laughs> Some people take their job way too seriously. 
Well, at least some subway workers are more laid back like me. Like this one time not too long ago, I went back to the subway I used to work at, and I didn't recognize any of the people there. But someone did get recognized in that store. Me. One of the workers said, Are you the guy that made the cartoon about working here? And I said, Yeah. And then I decided to make his job interesting by telling him, Hey kid, this is the place. What? This is where it all happened, kid. These floors are the very same floors that I used to mop. You missed a spot over there. And this kid lost all six of his olives. Okay, I don't use my fame to get into places I'm not supposed to. Usually. But this kid was so excited, and I used to work here, so I asked him, Can I go in the back? Which is probably breaking a bajillion health code violations, but this kid didn't care, he let me in. It had been three years since I had been back there, and literally nothing had changed. I don't know if any of you have ever moved out of your parents' house and then three years later you went back to visit and saw your childhood bedroom, but it was that sort of feeling. The chip boxes were still in the same place, inside the freezer all the food was pretty much where I left it, and the bulletin board had all the same papers. One of the papers was a list of all the employees with their names and phone numbers, and that list was so old that it still had all of my old co-workers' names and numbers, and it even had my own name and number still on the sheet. It had been crossed out, but I still went, ah, and I punched it out with a pencil. Maybe that's how my phone number got leaked. And then I thought, I wonder if the other number is still here. In the very back of the room, there was this desk, and I got down on the gross, unmopped floor, and I scooted underneath the desk, and... Oh my gosh, it's still here. When I used to work there, one of my coworkers found this store's Wi-Fi password and wrote it down on the bottom side of the desk so then everyone could watch Netflix instead of work. <laughs> and the employee had no idea it was there and he typed it into his phone and it still worked. All right, don't tell people that I told you this, I said. We can't let anyone know this secret. But then the place closed down, so now no one can get in trouble. Anyways, I'm gonna miss that place. It was gross and I didn't love working there, but... In the end, it was the most memorable job I had as a teenager, as it was the only other job that I had. It formed a good work ethic, I made new friends, and I even got to eat free food sometimes. But now I might get sued for this video, so we'll see what happens. So now, every time I walk into Suabwe with my non-service animal, a little part of me will be sad that my old Suabwe is in ruins. Okay, maybe it's not in ruins, but they'll probably turn it into a nail salon or something. Nothing lasts forever, so it's time to give Suabwe a proper burial.